I'm, you know, technology in the classroom is like a big, you know, it's like a big thing, but a lot of times people just use technology to use it because it's like, oh, look, this is cool. Um, so I picked two that I think are actually worthwhile to be used in the classroom that move beyond just, you know, oh, look at us, we replaced paper with digital things. Um, the first one I want to talk about is Flipgrid. I have used this one time because it's relatively new, uh, and what it is is essentially it is a discussion platform. So holding Socratic seminars is painful. Have you ever done one? A what? Socratic <coughs> seminars. They are incredibly painful. Yeah. You always have a kid who dominates the discussion, or two or three who dominate the discussion, and it mostly turns into a conversation between you and them. Yes. Right? It's yeah. super, can be uncomfortable. Some classes are just better than others. But this is kind of a way to allow other people to have a role in the discussion. Um, what it is is that uh, there's two types of discussions, synchronous and asynchronous, and this allows for an asynchronous discussion, which means that people get to participate in it at their preferred time. And the best part is, is that they can record themselves in this discussion question um, as much as they want until they feel like they get it right. So I'm just going to kind of show you what that looks like. I have a code that you can use if it doesn't work. This might be one that I deactivated. Oh, okay. It's not a big, I'm going to give you the code actually. <laughs> so what I need you to do is if you go to the, if you have your iPad or whatever, you can go to the App Store and download Flipgrid. Okay. Um, you can also use the, the web version. Um, that's fine too. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go to this um, so you can see what it looks like from the teacher side. And I will show you how I would record a video and what that would what that would look like. So I'm going to log in as the teacher. You can just use your normal, you know, Google login and all that. I don't feel like I need to go through that. You guys are all savvy enough to understand how to do that. So anyway, uh, what it does is, by the way, just with every educational technology, there's always a free version to give you a little taste, and then there's a paid version with all the bells and whistles. Now I will say, the paid version is pretty cheap. It's $65 a year per teacher, and it does allow for a couple to Two important things. One, it allows for kids to respond with via video to each other, which you can also moderate, right? So a kid can post something, but then you can decide if it's okay for, for them to say. And then you also can post video responses back to students. In the free version, you are allowed to do text responses, you can do a little emoji, oh, good for you stuff, kids like. Um, but to kind of give you an idea what this looks like, uh, this is my grid. There's grids, and then under the grids, you can have an unlimited number of discussions. So for example, I made this introductions one, and what it has is a little question. So it could be a historical question that you're debating. You wanna have a, a Socratic discussion, or it could be any topic that you want kids to tell you about. And so I write a question here, tell me and the rest of the class who you are and one thing that makes you happy. So it, right up here it has this little code. So I'm gonna pretend like I'm the student, and I'm gonna go into the Flipgrid, Flipgrid app on my phone, Yes, can you read the code? Are yeah. we supposed to get in there too? Yeah, 5B2857. So you, then you just enter it once you get in there, and it brings you right to this one. It's incredibly easy to use. The best part is, whenever they show me something when kids don't have to sign up. Mm -hmm. Yes. What? That's amazing. So, and then I have a little portion down here where I can record myself. I hit the little button and then I can, I can actually record this. So it only gives you a minute and 30 seconds when you have the basic one, but so like for example, my name is Jesse Peters, the lighting's not very good here. My name is Jesse Peters, uh, the thing that makes me happy the most is binge watching The Office. I love it. Right, so I do that, and then I hit the little button to post it. So there it goes. Oh yeah, and you have to have a selfie of yourself to show you are, so you're like, Ooh, kids like selfies. They do indeed. So, okay, then you put your, you know, your name and all that, so here we are. Optional, 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 that's optional. Success, return to grid. So now, when I refresh this, of course, we'll see what happens. Oh, look, there I am. So then as the teacher, you go in here and you can see what kids have responded. If the volume is up. Basic one, but so like for example, my name is Jesse Peters. The lighting's not very good here. My name is Jesse Peters. Uh, the thing that makes me happy the most is binge watching The Office. All right, so and there's my, there's my right. You can also set rubrics in this. So if you want to make a specific rubric for what they say, um, you can then grade them on that. 
they have it set with performance and ideas, but you can make your own, um, but it's optional. Uh, and again, like I said, if you have the paid version, then you can give them a video response, but you can always say like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm sorry, hey. Nice to meet you. Uh, I love the office. Two. Oh, no, two. There we go. Uh, so, then you can say that and... Child meta. Yeah. Uh, and you're good to go. I can't see your link on mine. Uh, you won't be able to. Um, you still have two more. Which should have been two of those. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was just when you were like saying like two, like too much. But no, that's also. Right, so, also. Anyway, so like I said, in the what it allows also is for kids who don't like to participate in discussions. You know, they don't want to give their ideas, but you want to hear them. And also, if you don't want to grade a piece of writing, this is way better. I thought that this was more enjoyable for me when I did it in the classroom. Um, because I only gave them 30 seconds, I listened to them, said something real quick, and it was way better than that. I mean, yeah, it's not a bad idea as a, you know, and it can also be used for differentiation as well. A kid who doesn't like to, who struggles with writing, that kind of stuff. Um, have you ever used it on assessment? Like, I mean, have you, like, let's say, like, a short answer question to, like, a quiz or something? Back to the back to the ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll trade for that too. Have you used it though? I mean, have no. You I used it as a discussion. Okay. Thing. I'm right. saying where you could post a prompt and say, "All right, you can do that. Answer this." Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yeah, you can do the thing where it's like this, where yeah. it's like in the class they cool. turn, they record each other, yeah. you know, and they give their answer and then they turn it in. It'd be a partner thing. It'd be whatever. I like, be I like that too because then you can do that at the end of the class or after right. a lecture or something. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, it's fairly new. Like I said, though, the paid version, just like every other technology tool better, but it is. Okay, I'm going to teach you about a wonderful technology called ZipGrade. I'm going to show you how it works because, I don't know about you, when it comes to final tests, I don't like to put them online, and that's the criticism that this thing is going to get is that, well, if you just put your uh, tests and things online on like things like Canvas and Google Skyward. Form, Skyward, it'll grade itself, but what's the problem with that? That's right. And screenshots. Cheating. That is screenshots. Kids airdrop uh, worksheets to each other. They drop everything to each other. Mm -hmm. And so it's stopping them from doing that. So the solution is pretty simple. Uh, and that is paper, pencil, but then you have to grade it. So this solves that problem a lot. It's called ZipGrade. Uh, I want to show you how that works. So just zipgrade.com is where you go for that. Uh, to tell you, just like every other technology, like I said already, there's a free version and there is a paid version. The paid version is necessary for this one, I think, because it allows you to have more students. You don't ever have to actually enroll students in this. I just use it to grade it and be done with it and to keep my test answers secure. So when you uh, want to make a quiz, the first thing you want to know is you got to have an answer sheet for this. You don't have to use their sheets, but you don't have to buy them. You just print them right off. So they have 20 question form, 50 question form, 100 question form. You do not have to use all of the questions for it to work. It also has the student zip grade ID. That's only if you want to make a roster of students in there. They don't have to fill that out, anything like that. They just need to put their name up here because it does actually, when you grade it, it's a picture of their name. They put their name right next to the score. Yeah, it's really neat. Um, and uh, then they just start down here and it has A through E is all it has access to, so you keep that in mind. But all the way 20, uh, 50, and 100 is what you have access to. So you print these off, and uh, then when you're ready to make one, you have two choices. And I'm gonna, on my phone, I'll, I'll make one, and then you'll see the top one <coughs> in the uh, quizzes that I've had to make. So you just download a free app called, it's called QuizGrade, and let me get to that. And uh, I have three fake students here, Jack, Jill, and Bob. I actually don't know if I've ever had a Jill or Bob. And uh, I wish I could show up there, but it just gives you the options. You just click on quizzes and uh, you just say make a new quiz. So I'm just going to name it quiz. <laughs> and uh, then you have to select a, a sheet, and mine is a 20 question one that I made. Pretty simple. So you select 20, 50, or 100, 20. Uh, it does that. And uh, then you're, you're good to go. So then what you want to do is you want to do the key 
Uh, so when you're in it, it'll ask you, you have all these things on here, how many you've graded, how many you haven't, so this is zero right now. You can edit key, scan the papers, review papers, or item analysis. That's really great too, it'll tell you like, which one's got the most wrong. So I mean, it does everything for you. So when you go to edit key, you can either punch in, and this is just as fast, but I have them right here. So if I scan for the key, and it's the primary one, you have to mark it that it's A, and then you just scan it, you align the black dots that are on there, and it takes it right there. So it has that loaded in now as my answer key, and I say use it, and point value for each correct answer, one, save. What's that app that you're it's talking It's called about? Zip Grade. No, is it, what was the other one you said with your phone? Awkward and correct, maybe. He said Quiz Grade. Oh, Zip Grade, zip I'm sorry. It's okay. just one Zip Grade. Zip, I'm sorry, Zip Grade. I thought you said Quiz Grade, but right. there was another app no. that we need. Okay, all right. So what then, what do you want to have? Like, I have multiple keys because, you know. Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? You click on that, you just say add a new key, and uh, I'll be providing the answers. You scan the key again for the one you want, so I want version B. I'll scan that one, does it, there it is. Now the best part is, unlike the Scantron, you don't have to fully bubble the key, you just put an X in the right spot. Finds it, it identified all nine easily, super easy. So that's in there now, I use it, save. So this should, when I refresh this, show this quiz in here. There it is. So that's just named quiz, 20 question thing. So now we're gonna do kids come up. They finish them, I'm gonna go back here. So now I'm good to go, and I can click scan papers, right on it, and let's see how Jill did. Jill did version B. Best part is you don't have to set it, it just automatically recognizes it. So for example, she just put the X's in the thing. She put an X in the other one, here we go. Great, she got 100%. Nice job, Jill. Uh, the best part is, is you can look at the uh, review of the paper, and it shows like literally which ones they got right and wrong right there. Because kids like, what ones they get wrong? You show them. Got it. Boom. Uh, let's see how Jack did. I have a feeling he didn't do as well. <laughs> so you scan the next one. Uh, to change student. Sorry, whoops. You scan it again, and now it has Jack. Oh, he only got a four out of twenty. Twenty percent. Not so good for him, but it's done. So you just keep scanning them. Bob, no, Bob got five out of 20, 25%. So now, uh, yeah. <laughs> this one's great. It shows you how many, how many you graded, the average score, um, all of that, and then it records it all right in here. So if you click on the quiz, here's all that information, and then it shows you which ones that you have graded. So there's Jill, Jack, Bob, all that's, I'm six ninety nine for a year. Well, the only difference looking at the pricing is if you go free, you get 100 papers per month. So the other way, you get unlimited. Correct. So if you have small numbers of classes, you have small classes, classes, you can do free. If not, seven bucks. A 100 papers a month, so you are great at 100 papers a month. It says per now, month, 100 papers okay. per month. Now here's the thing, the free is, the, the, the paid subscription is for the year, but you might be able to even find a way to use that as a department. I don't know why there's any reason why you couldn't yeah. do that. Uh, I'm you, thinking this might be the government test next week. I so I try because I got like 11 kids. Ooh, perfect for you. No, no Jesse, when I make no a army. test, all yeah. I have to do is fill out my own key and put the key in there. You scan it. I don't have to upload the questions or anything, so I can give the kids a, like a paper right. version of the yep. of the, the questions and say. You scan your key. You scan their key. Right. And that's you it. Have a class set of the class test. Class set yep. of the test. Just okay. Tell them not to so this absolutely, and kids say though they've literally told me we we're not we can't cheat in your class because of this and F. can they do it in pen? Yeah, I just did mine so, in pen. So the, it doesn't have to be pen. Yeah, they said they can just draw X's yeah, over X's. instead of having to so What what if they do pen and they mark multiples? How does it affect that? Yeah. Okay, now if they do that, then yeah, you have to like check it right there. So I would recommend they do it in pencil. pencil. So pencil that way they can erase it. Yes. Okay. But I mean, that's pretty cool. This yeah. is so well. This is this is exactly what Arnie's looking for. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he's gonna have. He said, uh, you know, "Melissa's gonna grade the written portion. I've got thirty-seven kids with hundred questions, and this would be perfect for that." Then the best part, I mean, it breaks down all the data for you. So like, here are all those questions. So like, I know with three kids, this looks really silly, but <clears throat> it tells you with question A what the answer was. Uh, and how many percent, you know, percentage you got right, right, that kind of thing. So that's done for you, so you can know what questions were terrible, which were bad, and you can just throw some out. 
It yeah. works incredibly well. This also helps us with data-driven instruction. Yes, and then we can Correct. save data. Yep. 